Steve Duncan is a New York-based urban historian and photographer who's explored sewers and underground infrastructures around the world. Here's a rare look at what lies beneath our feet. So close to home, and yet you pop down 20 feet, it's a totally new environment that you'd never think of. You just feel a sense of awe. It's dead quiet, and you feel like you're the last man on Earth. And that's incredibly rare in New York. I try to look at cities and their infrastructure by actually going into it. I try to see it close up. And the reason I think that's important is because we create urban places by making infrastructure. I started grad school in California for history, and I came back to New York for grad school at CUNY. And I, when I came here, I just, I fell in love with New York, and uh, that was why I started exploring. Uh, I know you're not responsible for his feelings, but when you say these things, are you threatening someone, threatening someone? Right. At first, I was treating it very much like archaeology, where I was uh, trying to find places where the past was preserved more clearly as a time capsule. That's uh, this first municipal rapid transit railroad of the city of New York, <laughs> suggested by the Chamber of Commerce, authorized by the state, constructed by the city. <laughs> I do kind of wish they made more subway stations like this. Part of what's so pretty about it, though, is uh, it's a des this, this design that just really doesn't work for modern trains. This is a beautiful curve, but since the 1950s, the train cars themselves have been longer, so it's really hard for them to go around such a tight curve. I began to look at the city in a whole new way, and I realized that when I looked at an old map and I saw historic streams running through the city, or, or what would become the city, when I looked at an old map from 300 years ago and I saw those historic streams, they hadn't disappeared. They had been reshaped over time, but those flows of water were still in some way flowing through the city today. And if I could understand that, I could understand more about how the city works today. This is the water from the natural stream. It's clearly free urban New York. It's the, uh, the natural landscape forcing its way through. The work that I do these days combines the historic preservation approaches and uh, infrastructure analysis, mostly around historic streams and uh, sewers. I, I call myself a sewer historian. The Minetta Brook flowed through Greenwich Village back when Greenwich Village was a separate village from New York. It was a farming community way north of what was then New York, which was at the very bottom edge of Manhattan Island. And uh, back then, up until about the mid-19th century, the Minetta Brook was above ground and it flowed right through this intersection at Fifth Avenue and 12th Street. The Minetta Brook actually started from two separate streams, and so this was the uh, eastern branch flowing through and then flowed underneath the site of what's now the First Presbyterian Church. Now, the First Presbyterian Church was built in the 1860s. So right around the 1860s was when the Minetta Brook disappeared from the surface of the city. Uh, I've talked to the archivist here at First Presbyterian Church, and he tells me that still, when it rains heavily, the basement underneath the corner where the Minetta Brook once flowed uh, will flood. So that is the Minetta Brook poking its head up again. Let's walk over towards Sixth Avenue, follow that flow of water. There's an above ground clue here that I really particularly like because it's a really different from most of the things that I look at. And that's the shape of the buildings here. It's at this weird angle. The reason it's at this weird angle is because the Minetta Brook was at a weird angle. And when this building was built, the Minetta Brook was still flowing right here. Being good New Yorkers, they wanted to make the most profit they could, build as much as they could on that lot. 
And uh, again, if, if it was 170 years ago, I'd be standing in the brook right now. Here we can open this up and see down a little more easily. We can see that beautiful Mineta water sparkling, well, not so pure and clear. When there's more natural stream water, that means that there's a real possibility of daylighting that water and bringing it out, separating it out from the sewage and uh, letting it flow above ground again as a natural stream. That means relieving pressure on our sewage system. Of course, at the same time, it also decreases costs uh, for us bringing in fresh water from upstate uh, that we currently bring in to do things like water gardens and, and water trees in our parks. The more I've gone underground and have explored wastewater systems especially, the more I've seen how much we are affected by historic and present day infrastructure systems. And of course, uh, the most obvious is in the case of flooding. Combined sewer overflows that happen approximately 50 times a year right now in New York City where untreated sewage gets released into our harbors. So what I would like to do is work to make a lot of these invisible underground infrastructure systems more visible. Yeah, looks pretty good. Just the ability to see something helps us care for it a little bit better. And so I think that citizens in general are able to understand how cities can reshape their environment. And that helps empower us to make cities into what we want them to be. When you're in the dark, you got this blank canvas to play with. You can choose where to put light and how to make that space appear. 